Well, good morning. Another sunrise with Pastor Hayton. Thanks for uh, spending a few minutes with us here this morning as we continue talking about if Jesus had not been born. What a world it would be had Christ not come. What a difference our life would be. What a difference our destiny may be. Christ is uh, wonderful in his birth and he's wonderful in what he came to do. And I've mentioned a few things had Jesus not come differences in our life. We would yesterday consider that we would not have, uh, you know, Paul's epistle to the Christians at Rome, where he talks about being justified by faith. We have peace with God. Then I thought about the book of Hebrews. I love the Hebrew letter. We don't know exactly who wrote it. Most people probably ascribe it to the apostle Paul, but we do not know with certainty since the writer of the book does not identify himself as such. It really doesn't matter who wrote it. We know the Bible says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine and for reproof, for correction, instruction, that, um, uh, you know, that we might be all that God wants us to be. I had it right on the tip of my tongue there and I lost it, but that just shows my humanity, doesn't it? But you know what I mean, all scripture is given. Holy men spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. And so it really doesn't matter if we have an author uh, putting his name at the beginning or at the end of the epistle. It's a wonderful book that has been inspired by the Holy Spirit. And uh, I'm just thinking about if Jesus had not come, we would not have had any of the New Testament, let alone this wonderful letter of Hebrews. And what really stands out to me is the fact that the Hebrew writer is talking about the Old uh, Testament system where, you know, they had to make the sacrifices year after year as an atonement for their sins, and, and uh, it was just quite a system, really. But uh, the Hebrew writer said, But this man, speaking of Christ, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. And he went on to say that, that this is the covenant that I will make with the, them after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts and in their minds will I write them and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. So we don't have to go making yearly sacrifices for our sins. There's been a, a new and a living way. It said by a new and a living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a full heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. And you know, it's wonderful today that uh, our sins and iniquities are not remembered by God. We kind of mentioned that uh, it's a matter of being justified yesterday, but it's just so wonderful that Christ came and he made a supreme sacrifice. He settled it once and for all that the atonement would suffice for the sins that had ever been committed, for the sins that perhaps were being committed even in the time of Christ's death. And he made a sacrifice that would cover the sins of men for the ages to come. So I'm glad that uh, we have that wonderful letter of Hebrews that tells us a little bit about a better way. Uh, God, I, I've often wondered why God didn't introduce it sooner than what he did. All the people of the Old Testament had to go through all of the yearly sacrifices and struggling to keep the law. And, and you know, it was, it was their obedience that was accounted to them for righteousness. And why didn't God send Christ sooner? I don't have the answer to all of that, but I'm glad that Jesus did come. And he did make a sacrifice uh, once and for all. And we have boldness to enter into the holiest. The Bible says, let us come boldly before the throne of grace. And that means that we can come without any hesitation whatsoever because of the sacrifice that Christ made for our sins. So I'm thankful today that we have a better way. I'm glad that God said their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. And had Christ not come, Every year we'd be trudging off to the temple to offer a blood sacrifice and uh, then we'd go back to our homes and we'd struggle through another year and um, trudge back to the temple 
to make another sacrifice, but Christ has made the ultimate. He has made the supreme. Thank him for that and be grateful for the sacrifice for our sins. Dear Lord, we thank thee for what Jesus has done in dealing with the sin issue. Thank thee, Lord, that while all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God, and that's all of us, Lord, yet thou didst make a way that our sins and iniquities would be forgiven, covered by the blood of this Savior, this babe of Bethlehem's manger that was to grow up to be the Savior of the world as he died on the cross. So thank you, Lord, for Christmas. Thank you that you sent your Son to be our sacrifice for sin. Lord, now bless us throughout another day. We pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Well, thanks again. We'll see you tomorrow on Sunrise with Pastor Hayton. Goodbye now.